With Wiley, he's a restricted free agent too, so they mm-hmm. can place a tender on him. I just don't think his market's all that high. Um, yeah. So that's going to be interesting. The Chiefs value Andrew Wiley, and they've we've seen that the Chiefs value Andrew Wiley probably more than other any NFL teams. Kind of like yeah. the same case with Dan Sorensen. Dan Sorensen probably means a lot more to the Chiefs than Dan Sorensen means to any other team in the NFL. And that's no knock to Dan Sorensen. That's just saying that the, that the Chiefs really like him. And same thing with Andrew Wiley. The Chiefs really like mm-hmm. Andrew Wiley. Um, LDT will be coming back. Um, yep. I think that that that's we say that's good, but we don't really know what shape he's in. Right. Um, he's out been being a doctor during this whole pandemic, which hats off to him, man. I don't know if we've talked about that enough on this podcast. What he's done has been stand up. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he probably deserved, you know, Walter Payton man of the year, if we're being honest. Sure. Um, but I, I think LDT coming back will be big for this line. Not only will it kind of give them a little boost in terms of depth and he'll more than likely start, I think. Um, but with Allegretti, we talked about Allegretti before the podcast, a six round pick from a year ago. Uh, well, I guess now two years ago, um, yeah. but he, he was able to step in and play well. You really need depth now. If you look at yeah. seven guys leaving, if, if they don't re-sign any seven of these guys, which I think they will probably re-sign uh, Ryder just because of um, his cost and his mesh with Mahomes. Connor and I have talked about that. Jordan, you and I have talked about that, that as well. But I, I think that Ryder re-signing probably isn't the worst idea. I mean, that cuts down on one of those key positions. They don't have to re-sign. But then you start yeah. looking at, like, guard, you have um, – you're going to have to retool there at tackle. Hopefully Lucas Niang comes back and he's in some sort of good shape. And hopefully he's been re- working with Duke mini weather, which we haven't seen anything of him <laughs> doing that, but I just am holding out hope for that to happen, but maybe he comes back and, and plays well. But then at, at that point, when those guys come back, you still need depth. Like you still need guys that are going to be the twos and threes. Well, and Tucker, here's my thing. Like, I, I completely agree with you on the the depth. That is going to be important because then if something happens where one or two guys get hurt, you're in the same freaking boat you're in a year ago, and then you're <laughs> right. screwed. So my problem is they're just relying on so much if, if, if. Like, if yep. Schwartz comes back and is healthy, if Niang in essentially his rookie season can play left tackle, which he never played. He was a right tackle, and then I believe a left guard. So if Niang can step in at tackle, if the doctor who was coming off an injury in 2019 wasn't even that good, he had a much better year the year prior before he got hurt, if he can return to form, if Austin Ryder comes back, if Osemele comes back, yeah. if maybe someone like Wisniewski comes back, if Kilgore comes, if they can do all this stuff, then they might have a good offensive line. Like the if then with the Chiefs this year um, on the offensive line, is insane. Like every other position seems to be, if this happens, they'll be fine. They can figure it out. There's no, if this happens, they'll figure it out with this offensive line. There are seven, if this happens, they'll figure it out types of situations. Like, it's not like they're completely doomed, um, but you can't field a unit for 16 games that you fielded in the Super Bowl. You just cannot do it. And I think that obviously getting the Yang back and the doctor back LDT um, if they can even be solid, that is a huge upgrade over what they were working with. And if Schwartz can come back and be solid, um, I think if Mitchell Schwartz comes back, as long as he's out on that field, he's going to be good. I think that if he's healthy, he's going to be good. The problem is, is he going to get hurt? And then Eric Fisher, do you sign him for a veteran uh, minimum and then rework his contract and then bring him back next year and then maybe play him? I don't know why people think that, bringing him along and then playing him in the playoffs or like the last regular season game is a great idea. Like I understand that train of thought, but for a big guy who's over 30 to be rehabbing all year and then make his season debut in a playoff game or in week 17, I just don't love that idea. So really I'm going to operate under the assumption Eric Fisher doesn't play at all in the 2021 season. And I am cautiously optimistic about the rest of it. And we shouldn't act like the Chiefs offensive line when they were healthy was a top tier offensive line. Yes. (laughs) Um, I think that sometimes we get caught operating under that sense of, okay, well, there'll be a really good offensive line um, if all these guys are back and healthy. The Chiefs need to add some talent. Um, Mm -hmm. They need to revitalize it with some talent um, on the offensive line because last year they, they relied on journeymen, um, you know, with Calicio Simile, Mike Remmers, Dan Kilgore, 
Um, all is, and there's no, nothing wrong against those guys. Those guys came in, they did their job when they were supposed to, but I think it's time for the chiefs to get younger at this position. Number one, and get more talented at this position. Number two, because you got a quarterback in the backfield. that's going to be needed protecting for at least probably 15 more years. So you're going to need some young guys up there up front protecting them. And I think that that's kind of a big issue with me is uh, and we, you and I were talking about this prior to the podcast too, is we talked about, okay, you know, if we can get all these pieces in, then this line will be the way that we want it to be but then we think okay is it really the way we want it to be because like the talent's not there <laughs> and hear me out i'm gonna lean into the microphone here part of the reason the jeep's rookie running back wasn't spectacular is because the left side of the offensive line couldn't block to save its life like yep. he can only do so much and if the run blocking near the goal line like granted clyde is a very small guy but if you can't generate any momentum up front and give him somewhere to run, he can only do so much. Like he's not Jamal Charles. He is a good player who I think will become a very good player. He's not going to make up for that offensive line. And even if they're all healthy, it's going to be an improvement, I think, but it's not like they are world beaters on the offensive line. And really with Patrick Mahomes, I think he can make up for that sometimes. Now there have been games where he makes their lives harder when he takes those deep drops and there have been games where he can get away from just about any pass pressure getting to him um, with the free lane. So man, it's going to be interesting. And obviously there's still a lot of time left before we get to the draft and free agency. But right today I do feel better about the future of the offensive line, at least. (laughs) 